Happy New Year! <laughs> Woohoo! Ah, oh, they're doing the song. Hang sign. What is it, we'll Julia? Take... What can I help you with? I have a note. Just put it down there. Hmm. Where can I put it where it won't get lost? What is it? A message. I picked it up and I noticed it said urgent. So I thought I should bring it to you straight away. But it looks like you're a little too busy. What so gave you that impression? It's OK. I can come back another time if you need me to. No, no, it's all right. Grab a chair. Come and sit with me. Perhaps you can help me out. What is it? Why is there so much? Well, it's been the busy, busiest year of our lives so far. Well, I suppose you're right, but it's a party. It's the new year. Woo! Woo! Yay! Yay! <laughs> oh, wow, that's not the party vibe I thought we were going for. Why are you working? It's a party. We've had a really busy year. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do we mean? Where have you been? I've been on a gap year after I graduated from angel training. I went backpacking around Europe. I have some pictures. So, for example, I went to that really, really high mountains. Yeah, oh, it was, it was quite a long hike. Or, um, yeah, that lake, that was beautiful. Oh, and I learned how to say, do not be afraid in five different languages. You want to hear? Fürchtet euch nicht. Nasse. It's all right, thank you. Maybe we'll hear the rest later. I've got a lot to get on with right now. Mm. I'll give you a hand. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, I can give you a hand as well, and you can fill me in what's been going on around here. Well, first off, what we need to do is to find the book written by Isaiah. Uh, it's around here somewhere. Um... Uh, but careful, that book is around 700 years old. I saw some really old books when I was backpacking around Europe. OK, I found it. Where am I looking? Ah, right. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Uh, here it is. So, to understand all this, I must give you some background first. Events that occurred when Herod ruled Judea for the Roman Empire. Zechariah was serving as a priest in the Temple of Jerusalem in those days, as his fathers had before him. He was a member of the priestly division of Abijah, and his wife was called Elizabeth. They were good people and just in God's sight, walking with integrity in the Lord's ways and laws. Yet they had this sadness... Due to Elizabeth's infertility, they were childless, and at this time, they were both part old, well, past normal childbearing years. One day, I was chosen to perform my priestly duties in the temple, an important job. While I was there, I burned sweet incense, which would carry our prayers up to God. Outside, a large crowd of people gathered to pray. Suddenly, I realized that I was not alone. But who could possibly be in the temple with me? You'll never guess. It was an angel from God. If I told you I was shocked, that would be an understatement. He said, Zachariah, calm down. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid? Well, that's a laugh. I'm a priest working in the temple. But priests don't normally hear from God. The people who hear from God are called prophets, not priests. So I never thought that something like this would happen. The angel told me that my prayers had been heard and that my wife was going to have a son. And I will name him John. He told me that my son will be a great man in God's sight and that he will prepare the way for God's son. I was confused. Elizabeth and I are, well, old. And I mean, really old. So I asked, how can I be sure of what you're telling me? I am an old man, and my wife is far past the normal age for women to bear children. This is hard to believe. Then the angel spoke to me sternly and said, I am Gabriel, and I stand in God's presence. I was sent here to bring you this good news. Because you didn't believe my message, you will not be able to talk. Not another word until your son John is born. What? Not be able to talk? Just because I had some doubts, we were about to become parents. Meanwhile, the crowd at the temple wondered why I hadn't come out of the sanctuary yet. When at last I came out, I couldn't speak. 
And sure enough, Elizabeth became pregnant. We were both so grateful to God that he had given us this miracle, a beautiful baby. And as you can see, I was able to talk once again. When our amazing little boy was born, I was able to speak again and tell the world that his name would be John. So, Zachariah was the first part of this big plan. You got to visit him, scare the life out of him, and tell him he wasn't going to be able to talk for nine months. Well, I wouldn't have put it like that, but in a nutshell, yeah, I guess so. Well, but was there really any need for that? Couldn't you just have sent a stork or something? A stork? This message is far too special for a stork or anything else for that matter. It might only seem like some weird pregnancy announcement, but it's special. It has to be done right. Oh, okay, fair enough. Sounds like they're having a really good time down there. Well, you're more than welcome to go back if you want. I can do all this. It shouldn't take me too long. No, no, it's fine. I'm going to stay. Plus, I want to hear what happens next. Okay, if you're sure. So, after Zachariah had told his wife that she was going to have a baby, there was another surprise announcement to be made. Six months later, in Nazareth, a city in the rural province of Galilee, I made another appearance. This time, God sent me to see Mary. I was doing my chores, cleaning and tidying, when out of nowhere, an angel appeared right in front of me. He said, greetings, the Lord God is with you. He has looked on you and seen that you are special. Among all women, you have been blessed. I was baffled, scared, confused, anxious. What was about to happen? The angel said, Mary, don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. God has chosen you to be the mother of his child. You'll have a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will become the greatest among men, the son of God. He will be the savior of the world. Well, that was preposterous. I told the angel then and there, I wasn't even married yet, so how could that be possible? He told me that all things are possible with God, and that even my relative, Elizabeth, who had been unable to have children, was pregnant, as God willed it, and that in three months, she would have a son. All things are possible with God. I was confused, but in my heart, I knew what I wanted to do. So I said, here I am, the Lord's humble servant. As you have said, let it be done to me. And the angel was gone. So I packed up my things and hurried to the house of Zechariah and Elizabeth. And I stayed with them for three months until it was time for my cousin to have her baby. Wow, two surprise pregnancy announcements. That was unexpected. Exactly. It was unexpected. But that's what makes it so brilliant. I love it. What a curveball. But what's so special about two babies being born? Babies are born all the time. I saw loads of babies when I was backpacking around Europe. Of course sure you, you did. did. Okay, well, I guess people don't always get an angel to announce it. So, what happened next? Oh, I know. Joseph was the next person you visited, wasn't he? Who's Joseph? Mary's fiancé. <laughs> oh, no way. I can't imagine that was an easy conversation to have. Hi, I'm Gabriel. Just so you know, the woman you're about to marry is going to have a baby. Yeah, it wasn't going to be the easiest of conversations, so I made an executive decision and waited until he was asleep. Not really a conversation then, is it? Not exactly, but he took it quite well, eventually. Mary and I were engaged, but not yet married. But then something happened which nearly put a stop to everything. Mary learned that she was pregnant with God's child. I'm a kind person, and so I wanted to spare Mary's shame. Did not wish to cause her more embarrassment than necessary. I thought that breaking off our engagement quietly was the right thing to do. But when I decided to act on my instincts, an angel spoke to me in a dream and said, Joseph, do not be afraid to marry Mary and bring her into your home. 
and family as your wife. The baby she now carries is a miracle from God. She will have a son, and you will name him Jesus, which means the Lord saves, because he is the one who will save all of his people from sin. I woke up from my dream confused. Was this just my mind playing tricks on me, or was it really God's messenger? Something within me felt that this was important. I knew deep down that this was no ordinary dream. So I did exactly what the messenger had told me to do. I married Mary, and when the baby was born, I named him Jesus. Oh, I understand. That's a special baby we read about in the book of Isaiah, the prophet of Israel, who foretold the story of Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. A virgin will conceive and bear a son, whose name will be Emmanuel. Absolutely, that's right. Well, I understand why you visited Joseph in a dream. He was a good man, but he needed some time to think about what he needed to do. Absolutely. I'm glad that didn't happen to me. Most of my dreams are about food. Well, perhaps you guys should go back to the party and get some food. Mm, yes, I'll carry please. On here. Good idea. But I think you should come as well. I'm sure there's going to be loads. Well, okay. Should we share it with everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what there is. Not my share, though. Where are they? Guys, come on back. We've got plenty to get on with, haven't we? <sighs> Enjoy your food? Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Feeling satisfied now? Mm, nearly. Mm. So, while all this was going on, Elizabeth and Zachariah had their son and named him John. And he was special because? Well, he was going to prepare the way for Jesus. See, they're both babies at the time, but in the future, John will prepare the way for Jesus. He will tell people that the saviour of the world has come. That's a lot of responsibility. Well, it is, but he's not alone. God will be with him. So, Zechariah and Elizabeth have their son, John. Mary and Joseph are going to have Jesus. So, what happened then? Quiet home birth, friends and family there to make sure that everything went smoothly. <laughs> not even close. What? Why? There was a census. A what? A census. Look, I've got some notes somewhere here about the census. Um, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so, the purpose of the census was to make sure that everyone was appropriately taxed and knew who was in charge. Around the time of Elizabeth's amazing pregnancy and John's birth, the emperor in Rome, Caesar Augustus, required everyone in the Roman Empire to participate in a massive census. The first census since Quirinius had become governor of Syria. Each person had to go to his or her ancestral city to be counted. So, from what I can see, this meant that Joseph, from Nazareth in Galilee, had to participate, obviously, in the same way everybody else did. Because he was a descendant of King David, his ancestral city was Bethlehem, and Mary, who was now in her late pregnancy, that you'd predicted, had to go with him. Well, that's terrible timing. Surely she was about to have a baby. Travelling so far across the desert would have been dreadful in her condition. I imagine how worried Joseph must have been. Absolutely. And whilst they're in Bethlehem, Mary gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in a blanket and placed him in a feeding trough. Wait, what? You just said that sentence as if it would be the most normal thing in the world to say. Oh yeah, she just put it in a feeding trough because there was no place in the inn. No room in the inn. No one spare bed. Well, actually, that almost happened to me when I was backpacking around oh, Europe. Oh, give it a rest! Oh, yes, it did. <laughs> okay, so what? There were in an animal shed. Yeah, they were. That was the only space available to them because Bethlehem was so busy. My guess is that they were one of the last ones there because it would have taken Mary so long to make that journey. My goodness, that super special baby was born amongst the hay and the donkeys. He was. Jesus was born in a humble stable. But they weren't alone. 
What? Because of all the animals? No. There were some other very special visitors as well. Let me guess. You had something to do with it. As a matter of fact, I did. So did I. So, what happened? We were out in the fields, outside of Bethlehem, same as every night of the year, just an ordinary group of shepherds guarding our flocks from wild animals in the darkness of night. We could see the lights and hear the crowds gathering in Bethlehem, debating where they might have all come from, how long they'd travelled for, when suddenly an angel of the Lord stood in front of us and the usual darkness was replaced by a glorious light, brightest light I ever saw. We were terrified. The angel then said, don't be afraid. I bring good news of great joy, news that will affect all people everywhere. Today, a saviour has been born for all mankind. He's in the town. You'll know you found him when you see a baby wrapped in the blanket, lying in a feeding trough. Then the first angel was joined by thousands of others, a vast choir of angels. They all praised God. When they disappeared into heaven, we were buzzing. We were trying to work out what had happened, what it all meant. Was it even real? Of course it was real. We'd all seen it with our own eyes. We were excited. A messenger of God had just invited us to the most incredible event of, well, ever. The baby had been born right down in Bethlehem, only 10 minutes away, five if we ran, and this baby was special, holy, saviour of the world. So we ran down into the town and found Mary, Joseph, and the baby lying there in the feeding trough. As the angel said, after we saw him, we told everyone we could find. We went back to our sheep, praising God for all we'd seen and heard. We talked for hours and hours until the sun came up. We are just shepherds. We aren't that important to anyone, really. But God shared with us this incredible moment. I'll never forget it. I loved appearing to those shepherds. They were so happy and excited once they'd gotten over the initial shock. Oh, what an amazing moment. I'm so gutted I wasn't there. It's such a special moment. And now you understand why my desk is such a mess. You know, I'm so busy, what with all the planning that I had to do, and all the risk assessments as well. You can't be too careful, particularly when you're surprising people. <coughs> well, all of this stuff here now needs to go into the archives and, until somebody else is going to write about it at some point. Well, I'm glad you filled me in. Even though you missed the party? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we can party anytime. Yeah, parties are great, but who would want to hear this story? I can tell you some great stories from when I was backpacking around Europe. No! 